What's up, my musician friends, both young and old? Thank you guys for being a part of this. My name is Rob. I'm some guy named Rob, and I'm here to give you, pass on a little wisdom about what I've learned in the business. So, uh, in the business, um, first of all, are you a full time musician? If you are, then you probably have things to teach me, which is totally cool. Please be sure and comment if you have something that you're like, hey, can you do a video about this? Because I've experienced that. And uh, it, yeah, because it happens. Um, today we're going to talk about something that musicians, especially full-time musicians, really need to think about. And you might have guessed it, is debt. All right. Being a musician is expensive. I mean, a guitar for, for a musician. I remember buying my first guitar... $400. It was my first acoustic guitar that I bought. My, my parents bought me my very first guitar whenever I was 14. And I'm telling you straight up, like when you got to buy your own stuff, it's expensive. Strings? Oh my goodness. Where are my strings at? They're here. I have to buy these suckers in bulk. This is an old package, yeah. But uh, Elixir. Um, I really do love custom lights. And no, I'm not getting paid for that. That's just what I like. Um, so debt. Elixir strings are like $22. I have to buy them in bulk so I can get them more like a $12. So if you know you're going to be changing strings, go ahead and buy in bulk uh, from your normal places. Uh, okay. Debt is bad. I think that's safe to say. Okay. If you've never been in debt, congratulations. You're one of the few. You might not even be American. But because it costs so much money, we find ourselves in the place time and time again of not getting paid very much, how much it costs to actually play. So let's talk about some cost first. And this is from a full-time musician standpoint. And if you're not full-time, then maybe this video isn't for you. But if you want to be full-time, you might want to watch this just for some ideas about what it takes. All right, first of all, instruments. Okay, we already talked a little bit about guitar strings and guitar, uh, piano, keyboards, stands, microphones, um, if you if you have an iPad or something to, to scroll through lyrics, you've got that. Um, there's so many different kinds of uh, expenses just for a singer-songwriter, let alone drummer, $1,000 drums, $2,000 drums. Um, now we have to talk about gas money because you're going to get to the place. You've got to talk about car. you got to talk about the expense about either you buy a cheap car for $3,000 and you may or may not get to... Where's my dog? Why is she barking? All right, you may or may not get to the, um, you may not, 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 not again. I don't think I ordered anything from UPS. All right, I'm pushing pause. Dog food. Apparently it was dog food. Okay, where were we? Expenses. Okay, you got a lot of expenses being a musician. You don't want to have a lot of expenses, but you do. Yes. Because it, it, every time you go to a show, let's say you go to a show that is an hour away. All right, every time you do that, an hour is roughly, let's say it's Little Rock for me, so that's roughly 90 miles, 80, 90 miles, depending. Uh, and so that's a round trip. So you're putting two hours worth of distance on your car and fuel inside your car. So you may fill up at the gas tank and then have a half a tank of gas when you get back. All of that is expenses. Now, musicians, you need to keep track of your expenses, especially full-time musicians, because everything is a tax write-off whenever you are uh, touring full-time. If you have to eat because you are out, then yes. Yes. You've got to keep it. Um, tires, all that kind of stuff. Well, the way that I, I do my taxes, uh, the cars depreciate a certain value per mile and so I just allow that to do it because it's a lot easier than keeping up with all my receipts and it's probably more beneficial in the long run unless you have major repairs like I did one time and let me tell you that's actually what put me into debt as a young musician I had this van and all my friends like Ibriano and and Abinsky know exactly what van I'm talking about them them I'm not gonna say the name but it's we know what it is and it was a, it was a great van while it lasted but when it started breaking down it was an expensive van because it was foreign and so the more it it uh broke down the more expensive it was to try to fix it and i went six thousand dollars into debt credit card debt mind you not even smart debt stupid debt um by the way i'm not an advocate of credit cards i don't have one cut them up just cut them up you don't need them cut them up if you can't pay for it with cash, you don't need it. 
and this is a, you know, you can go to Dave Ramsey to get more stuff like that, but I'm an advocate of just no to credit cards. Yes to debit cards. If you don't have the cash for it, write it off. I mean, not tax write off. I mean, don't just write off the idea of it. Save up the cash and buy it outright. Okay. So my, my van busted and I had to, I had to go to my gigs to get money. So I was having to pay these guys and I don't know if they were doing me right or not, but I had to pay these guys to get the van fixed enough and then something else would break and I'd take it back and I'd pay them more and something else would break. I don't know if the, it was just a bad time for the van and or a bad kind of van, but either way, it ended up costing me six grand. Now, what do you do with six grand on credit card debt? I tell you what you do, you end up with about $10,000 worth of credit card debt because you can't pay. So here's the point where you have to ask yourself, I want to be a musician, but I'm I'm going into debt to do it. Okay. And at the time, I just couldn't. I couldn't do everything that I needed to do and all the things I wanted to do musically and do it all at the same time. It was a terrible mistake. I should have just gotten a job. I'm going to be straight up with you because I wasn't playing every night at the time. I was playing maybe two or three nights a week, but I could have, I could have handled a part-time job, which would have sufficed and brought me in some money and let me pay for those. But I was stubborn. Don't be stubborn. That's just prideful. It's just ego. Kill your ego. If you need to get a job, if you need to teach lessons on the side, if you need to, to do this, do that, do it. But don't, don't be prideful. Don't let pride run and thusly ruin your credit. Um, debt is bad. Stay out of it. Okay. I know that's really all I want to say about that right now. I do want to tell you some ways you can stay out of debt. And one of them is what we're going to have top goal topic, topic, topic. So we're going to tackle next topic. That was hard to say. We're going to tackle the next topic. We're going to tackle the next topic. Okay. I'll try. Um, if you dig what I'm doing here, I, and I hope you are, be sure. And, and if you have questions, cause I just briefly skimmed about debt. Uh, it costs a lot to do things. It's okay to ask for money. And that's what we're going to talk about next time. We're going to talk about it's okay to ask to be paid for what you do. Okay. You want to find out more, subscribe, ring the bell. I don't know if it's over here. I'm pointing over here like it is. Maybe not. Bring it over here. Bring it, ring it, ring it, ring Ring it over there and, and uh, find out what I'm going to be up next. Uh, if you dig what I'm doing, thanks. Uh, support me. You know, you can always find me on Patreon. If you dig what I'm doing on, uh, on Patreon, there's always drop a dollar in my virtual tip jar uh, per month, and that helps me out. Helps me keep making videos and stuff. All right, gonna go later, my taters. Questions, comments, critiques, put them down there. Stay out of debt. I mean it.